Thank you for staying with us. If you are just joining us, Karibu Tela Sana. I am a genuine boy. Glad you are with us. You can check us out on Twitter. Talk to us via the same communication platform. The hashtag to use is Good Morning Kenya. At genuine boy is my handle across all social media platforms. And our official station handle is at KBC Channel 1. So right now we want to get into our family segment this morning. And today, as mentioned earlier on in the intro, we are going to be having a conversation around divorce, given that it has been on an increase here in Kenya steadily over the years now to help us this, uh, with this particular discussion in studio this morning we have with us a pastor Vincent Mulwa he is a pastor as mentioned and also a teacher at the Christ Pilgrims Restoration Center Karibu Sana Vincent thank you madam thank you for making time Kukuja Paivi we talk about this issue yes now, um, just looking at us as Kenyans, we are an African state and you know marriage is considered a rite of passage. But bringing this conversation home, in Kenya, divorce has been on a steady uprise, uh, uprising trend since 2000, uh, where we had approximately, um, nine, uh, we had about, um, where is it? We had about 110 divorce cases. That, and this is only at the Milimani locals that were filed in 2000. Fast forward to last year, 2019, there were at least 1,091 cases that were filed at the Milimani Law Courts when it comes to divorce. And looking at divorce here in Kenya, it is fault-based as opposed to our Western uh, side uh, of the divide where you, know, you just need consent to go ahead with divorce. But in Kenya, it is fault-based. That means there needs to be a marital um, 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 uh, some, a marital fault that has been committed by one of the partners in order to result to uh, divorce. But now we just want to understand what are some of those reasons that are being put forth as to why so many people are divorcing and just looking at January alone of this year, there are 195 cases that were filed at the Milimani Law Courts when it comes to divorce. February, it went up to 149. So you can only how, how worse will it be by the time we get to the end of the year? And given this pandemic has also accelerated this particular situation. Be part of this conversation. Share with us your thoughts. Why do you think so many people are resorting to divorce? And especially the younger folk, um, is it that we are not as, uh, you know, I don't know, but that is what we are going to find out. Share with us your thoughts once again using the hashtag Good Morning Kenya. Now, let me come to you, Pastor. Yes. Let me just start with plain simple. Yes. Do you think people are marrying for the wrong reasons <coughs> in this day and time, especially the young folk? Well, uh, thank you very much for inviting me in this discussion. Mm -hmm. One, okay, um, people don't marry for, okay, well, marriage is very important. Yes. As it's, it's part of life, it's part of society. It has to happen. Mm -hmm. When people are marrying, they, they are convinced that they are marrying for the right reason. Mm -hmm. But I, there is a problem. That is why I'm, I'm, I'm saying mm -hmm. marriage now needs to be relooked. We need to, to, to reach a point mm -hmm. and sit and ask ourselves, what is going wrong? What is happening? And this is what I, I want to, to, to start my, 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 my concern on this matter. Mm -hmm. That one, in the day of our fathers, Okay, I'm in, I'm in my 50s. Yes. The, so the people in the 50s, you can, now you can imagine your fathers and mothers. In that generation, divorce was almost not there. It was not, it was not there. Yeah. It, was, it, it, was, it was okay. Came our time, the children of those ones. Now, uh, our marriages are struggling, right? Mm -hmm. Now then, we come to our children. Uh, the marriages of our children is collapsed. Now, what is the problem? The matter requires a serious analysis. Um, uh, uh, what, 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 what I will call, okay, well, um, a reevaluation. What has really gone wrong? And this is why, how I am looking at it. Our fathers had not gone to school, mm -hmm. and they had not gone to church, and their marriages were working. Right? Our generation, we became better. Ch we okay, where church came in our time. We embraced church. Mm -hmm. We embraced education. Marriages uh, um, started having problems. Our children were born inside the church mm. and dedicated in the church. <laughs> so, right. And they, and, and, and they knew nothing, and they know nothing more than school. Marriages are not working. Mm -hmm. So, what went wrong? And I'm, I have a serious problem that we have to look at the foundation on which marriage today is founded. Mm. And I am very honest, if we need to sort out the marriage, 
we need a whole thinking again because it has everything to do with the school theology with the school ideologies and the church ideologies okay because that is where the problem has, has started. Before the two were there, the, the marriage was working. Mm -hmm. As we get deeper into church and deeper into school, marriages collapse. I had thought that school and the church will make marriages Things work. Better, yeah. But now it's making it worse. <laughs> now, you rightfully put it that, you know, back in the days, yeah. our parents, you know, they did not have much reasons to divorce. And yes. even if there were reasons, they yes. choose to work it out. Right. But now looking at Kenya in this day and time, according to the Marriage Act of 2014, yes. divorces are based on faults. And mm -hmm. do you think this also, um, the fact that our divorce system in Kenya is based on a mistake that one partner did is also making it easier for people to opt out of marriages? Ah, no. The problem, the, the problem we have, these mistakes, huh? Yeah. The wrongs I do to you, so that you think of divorcing. Uh -huh. The wrong, what is what is the wrong that the husband has done that the wife considers divorce? Mm -hmm. What is the wrong that the wife has done that the husband considers divorce? Now that is where now that is now <laughs> that now where the the, the, wool, the, the wool fix is. That's where, now that is the area where the complication is. Okay, it's because we have. We have unsolvable wrongs mm -hmm. which must happen. We have some wrongs which are going to happen whether we like it or not. In the system we are in, there are wrongs which are not going to die. Mm -hmm. All right? So we have to wonder, either do we live with these wrongs or what is our problem? Because, okay, well, like for example, one of the wrongs is, the, okay, and it, it is always the, the, the men, not the women. <laughs> yes, another woman. <laughs> Right. Yes, another woman. That is usually the common wrong. Eh? Ninety percent of the wrong. All right. Ninety percent of the wrong is he has another woman. All right. Now today also we are finding the the, 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 the woman realized that uh, the, he has a, he, he, he has another woman, so she has another man. Infidelity just comes mark in the middle of the relationship. Yes, because now it becomes like a competition. Yeah. I am asking, why are we not looking at why these problems are arising? Why? Why? Why is this this problem? And that's why I'm saying it is an ideological issue. Mm -hmm. It is what we have been cultured to believe is right and wrong. Could we be having some right and wrongs which are not wrong and right? That's <laughs> that is where the problem is. Mm -hmm. All right, <laughs> we need to we need to, to look things because we are fight, we are actually uh, well in this matter of marriage we are fighting with the reality. We are mm -hmm. fighting with life. Yes. Now. The, um, now, before we even go further, you just talked about the question whether it's right or wrong, whether it's <laughs> wrong that is considered right. And yeah. only, let's talk about that issue to do with infidelity. Yes. Is there anything right about it? No. Or that, that is considered <coughs> wrong or the other way around? Now, you know, we derive the right and wrong from the church. Mm -hmm. Right? The church tells us this is right and this is wrong. All right. Now, what the, what the church told us is right and wrong, now, th there is an area, something to be looked at there. Because it is the cause of guilt. Mm -hmm. Now, when we, okay, well, when we say the one man, one wife, we created a wrong called having another wife, mm -hmm. having another woman. For okay. Them. For, okay, well, it, 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 incidentally, it's about the, the, the men. Eh? Mm -hmm. But the problem is, I'm saying the, 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 the church decided to fight with nature, right? There are so many women without a husband. The church decided to fight with nature. Yes. Okay. Whoever con concocted the marriage, the church marriage ideology uh -huh. decided to fight with the nature. But isn't what is based in the church based on what the good book says? No. Unfortunately, in the area of marriage, uh -huh. the, 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 the church ideologies of marriage are based on the ideas of the West. Okay. Not on the Bible. All right. Now that is, and that is now where the, the, the problem is. Mm -hmm. We are having ideas based on the thinking of the West not on the thinking of the Bible. So how is that thinking wrong when it comes to marriage? The thinking of the, the, the okay, well, the, um, the Bible thinking of marriage, one, mm -hmm. marriage is, n is, is, um, uh, is not a prayer item in the Bible. Mm -hmm. It is a decision matter based on necessity. In the Bible, there is no provision for being happily single. There is no provision for a, for, for a woman miss, missing out on marriage. Mm -hmm. It doesn't exist in the Bible. Every woman, as far as Bible doctrine is concerned, is in marriage. Every adult woman. Except those who have a gift of self-control and those who are over 60. The Bible excludes them from marriage. So, okay. so. Those, but those, all those others who are biologically functional, the scripture is very clear. They need to be in a marriage. Mm -hmm. 
In the day of the Lord, in the day of Paul, in the day of, in the, in the day of Moses, in the day of the apostles, there was no women outside marriage. Now we have a problem. The church has created women outside marriage. And you want to say they should stay. And you know they are not staying. And then a man caught up with, with, with them is, is, is crucified. And we were not crucifying the women <coughs> for having accepted a man. Now we need to, to, to ask ourselves, who said, why are there women without a husband today? And what is the church going to do about it? Because that is the cause of infidelity. Mm. And if we don't sort it, I mean, you know, doc, there, there's something that doctors don't do. Doctors will not rush to stop diarrhea or vomiting. They have to, 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 look, to, to look for the cause. Mm -hmm. Why is it happening? Why are you there yelling? <laughs> right? So, the, the, now we have a problem. Infidelity has become a serious matter in the, in the church. And my prescription is simple. If the church wants to sort this infidelity matter, first, the beginning point is what Paul says. I would that the younger women marry. That is the beginning point. If the church doesn't have a formula by which the younger women will get married, the church should, should, should declare infidelity not a sin. Right? And then people will be okay. But then, what, what now? That, that, that will not be a church. Mm -hmm. It will not be a religion. Okay. But as it were now, we have a very funny situation, a, a real hypocrisy. And hypocrisy, when it comes to real life, it's very bad. We cannot pretend forever. Mm -hmm. We have to face life and face it real. I'm saying, for the, for, uh, if we are to fight in infidelity, let us redefine what is wrong and what is right. All right. What is wrong in marriage and what is right in marriage? Well, let's redefine. When you do that, then we are moving forward. But we are just making noise. Don't do this, don't do this, don't do it. But then we are not telling people what to do. Mm. So we say what we don't want, but we don't communicate what we want. Yes, that's it. The church said, don't do this, don't do, don't do. Please. Now, it is, it is come a time to, 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 to say, what do you want the people to do? Therein comes this conversation about polygamy versus monogamy. Yes. Um, so many look at uh, polygamy as a sin and yes. consider <coughs> it not right because the Bible says one man, one woman. Yes. And therein still the same situation. We have so many uh, couples that are stepping out on each other yes. and still employing this uh, polygamy <coughs> system of uh, being in relationships but don't want to acknowledge it. And thus you find one marriage ending, jumping onto the next relationship. What are your thoughts when it comes to that? Well, my thoughts are very clear and Bible-based. It is God who has made life the way it is. Mm -hmm. That the girls mature for wife earlier than the boys. Mm. I decided to look at the 2019 census eh, from the marriage perspective. That is considering the early entry, uh, the un, uh, the early entry age mm -hmm. into marriage. And for girls, 18, 18 years is okay. All right, for early entry. For boys, uh, uh, 25 years is okay for early entry in marriage. Mm -hmm. And you know, now take that, uh, uh, just, uh, just, uh, just go, go to the population census. When you take that, the women above 18, first of all, the men above 25, the difference is 4.2 million. That's Kenya. Mm -hmm. 4.2 million women available for, uh, for, 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 for wife, marriage, yeah. and the, the men are not there. Now, nobody wants to think about that. I am saying, Whoever said polygamy is a sin mm -hmm. should say, what did God, why did then God allow that there be more women for wife than the available men for husband? Incidentally, the entire Bible is written in a polygamous setup to a polygamous audience. Just Christ preached to a polygamous people. Paul preached to a polygamous people. And somebody comes out, actually I'm, I'm, I'm very clear, monogamy to be a Christian is a religion outside, outside the Bible. It's a different religion altogether. It is not the Bible. Yes. It is ideas of the West. And it is taking us where the West are. That's why I'm saying we should not all behave like we are bewitched. <laughs> you know, a bewitched people refuse to think. Eh? That is what witchcraft is. Eh? Yes. A bewitched people refuse to think. You have seen clearly that the West have, have, have faithfully followed the idea of one man, one wife. They have ended up with no marriage. Divorce is daily. Mm -hmm. Why does it happen? Because there's a woman here who, who doesn't have a man. Yes. And she has to, she has to admire a man. When she, when she admires me and I, and, and I have a wife, then, then now I, and, and, I, and, and I react, then I have to start on working about how to divorce this one that I can marry that one. So in essence, you think polygamy might help deal with these rising cases of divorce? Well, I am not uh, a Puritan. Yeah. 
but I need to have standards which are real. Okay. <laughs> there are there to be standards in life which are realistic and attainable. Mm -hmm. So, so. Um, um, polygamy is will make marriage attainable and realistic for whoever wants to be in marriage. Okay. But with monogamy, marriage will not work because there will always be women without a husband. Mm -hmm. And as long as there are women without a husband, then infidelity will be there. Yes. And those women are in church, all of them. Yeah. All right? <laughs> so, so, so uh, in the will, be, will be in that church. Yes. Because there are women without a man and they are biologically normal. Mm -hmm. So can the preachers face reality and say, now, this is it. We, uh, nature, and by nature it is God. Mm -hmm. Nature has created more women for wife than the available men, men for, for husband. husband. So can we face it and add all this matter? Oh. Let me tell you something interesting. Yes. A, a, a bishop called me to his office one day mm -hmm. and asked me, what is it this reverend you are saying? We start to discuss. We discuss and discuss and say, and, and at that one, one point he, he told me, reverend, you are wasting your time. All right? All women cannot fit in marriage because women are too many. He has, he has admitted, huh? mm -hmm. and he told me that they cannot fit. I told him, man of God, what have you said? He says, yes, I've said women cannot fit in marriage, there are too many. I asked him, so do you mean in charge there will be women without a husband? He told me, yes, they will definitely be there. Okay, then I asked him another question from there. Then how will they be going about their sex and the reproduction? Mm -hmm. He told them, please. That one we leave it to God. We are not going to help God. All right. Okay. Just um, <laughs> let, let me finish. It's a gent very well. Then he, then he, okay. I, I, I told him, man of God, you have said something. Very, you have noticed a problem. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to be party to, to, to the problem, mm -hmm. and you are a servant. Why does somebody employ a servant to help them? Now you are a servant, and you have refused to help the master. Why are you a servant? I told him then, let's, well, if we have noticed a problem in the church yes. and we can't be party to solving it, please let us go home and tell Jesus Christ to come and solve this problem. Why preach and get offerings and we're not solving people's problems? You talk about the problem without giving a solution. Yes, you only talk about the problem. The solution you say, let God, uh, let, let, let people and do as they want. All now, right. Christianity, everybody does as they want. That is what we're talking about today. The whole question of um, divorce in Kenya. You know, polygamy yes. has been such a subject of so much debate over time. Some arguing that, you know, polygamy might help um, ease these cases of... Uh, infidelity that we are seeing uh, according to uh, our pastor here in studio you cannot talk about a problem and not give a solution to it and the reality on ground is there are more women than men and there's actually one Amos who's tweeting here saying that after how women without husbands <laughs> 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 but keep sharing with us your thoughts in regards to this particular conversation about why divorce is on an upward trend here in Kenya now we've tackled the whole issue to do with infidelity let us move on to another issue and this is um boredom yes and this mostly affects the younger people according to at least what i found is that so many young of uh, the younger generation yes. are divorcing because they're saying uh, you know i got bored we're doing the same thing day in day out somebody gets married today three months down the line they're separating. Mm -hmm. Somebody gets married today two weeks down the line they're separating mm -hmm. or because they say you know i i don't like it i'm bored mm -hmm. what, what do you think brought is bringing this the whole issue about boredom mm -hmm. in marriage i talked about the problem of the, the school. Mm -hmm. The school has fed us with ideologies which are also not real. Mm. Somebody goes to marriage expecting fantasy and the fun. But marriage is a responsibility and it is hard work. All right? It is, it, well, it is, there is no way we are going to accept, oh, there is so much fun. And, and uh, in, in that also, the, the judge and the school are one. The, the, the church is also preaching fun, marriage being fun. Eh? Mm -hmm. So you want to go into marriage for fun, to get all that you want. There's a certain ideology that we've, we have the been told The ideology that you have made in your mind. Mm -hmm. I love this man every day. This man will be the, the He will be this. He will be this. You go into reality, you find it doesn't work. I, I, I listen to, to preachers and sometimes I really wonder. You say, you, okay, you must take your wife out, you must take her to... Now, then it means marriages will work only for the people with money. Mm -hmm. If you don't have good money, and you know money is never enough. They, in the family, we have many things to buy. Yes. All right? We have children, we have land, we have house, we have so many things to do. And there are people who are struggling. They cannot afford to, bring, to, to buy something else. If, mm -hmm. if, if, if we bought a dress why, why, once, 
and uh, and the wife is dressed surely they are still, she can still move but you know you have been you have been uh, uh, fixed into a lot of expectation. So, this bottom thing is coming because of over expectation. Mm -hmm. And the over expectation is an ideology brought by the school mm -hmm. and the church working together. So I'm how saying then, the problem is those two institutions. So, how then do we resolve this situation? Just try and see more marriages do not end in dissolution because <coughs> boredom kicked in. We have to we have to be sure that we are we are talking the the, the reality the real things about marriage. Yeah. We tell our children the truth. Marriage is responsibility. Marriage is hard work. Marriage is not fun. It is a responsibility. You get in and you have to work hard. There are things that you, you have to do and there are things to forego in life. In life, everything is not. The, uh, things don't always happen the way you want. Yes. I, I don't always. Go, I don't always go to eat in Hilton. I will want, but I won't go there. So, so I will not be able to ride on the plane every day, mm -hmm. right? And I would want to go to Mombasa by, by air. So let's stop offer expectation. Is mm. what is causing the boredom? Because you came expecting my husband will take me here my husband will do this my husband will do this my wife will be there it will not happen so it is over expectation over expectation over expectation okay and for the men now you you okay <coughs> again I, I, again the um, monogamy is also still there they, they, there is what you want the the, 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 the wife to do and they are, and, and they, there are times you can't do it right and you have no other one and you have been told she's the only one even the wife now there are things you 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 you, you, you okay you, you 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 have a career today there's actually there's a lot of challenge you have a career to do you have this and you are the only wife to this man mm -hmm. and he's a very um, he's, 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 he's energetic there are things that he wants you to do every time and he would do yeah now can we really come to to, to face life and be honest that the ideologies we have in life, what we have derived from school and the church, mm -hmm. are not working and they won't work until if we follow, if we keep them, yeah. we'll just go the way of the West. All right. In the West, marriage is dead. So we need to give a young folk the actual reality and we, stop painting a picture yes. that is not real. And, and, what is happening. And, and, <coughs> and the problem is, <coughs> instead of preaching the reality, we preach the, the, the best practices according to the preacher. Okay. What the preacher thinks is best. Unfortunately, many preachers are, are speaking lies. Right? He has me pangwa kando. Uh -huh. He's saying I have only one wife. And he has a pangwa kando. He's saying things are so good at my home and they were quarreling in the morning. Now, surely, can we face reality and stop having a plastic ideology of, of marriage? It won't work. Stop having a plastic <laughs> ideology of a marriage. Yes. That is the only way we're going to get to yes. having marriages that last. Yes. All right. And tell our children the truth. Right? <laughs> okay. And the other, the, the other, the other expectation mm -hmm. is in the area of, equal, uh, of equality. Now, we'll be coming to okay, that in sir. a bit. But before we get to that, uh, I see my colleague Dee's uh, radio on the other side of the studio. Dee, what's going on? What is happening on your end of things? Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> before I came on, I was just laughing and smiling because this is just an interesting conversation. And I can tell you for sure Kenyans are really feeling the same with that. It's just an interesting conversation. But before I get the feedback, you can get to us via our social media platforms at KBC Channel 1 TV on Facebook, on uh, KBC Channel 1 News as well, on Twitter, KBC Channel 1. The hashtag to use is Good Morning Kenya, at Jane Mumboy, at Sam Joroge, at Ray Manyara, and at Doreen Arange. Those are our social media handles. And I want to start with Facebook. Kamau Karathinga says, My pastor, let us tell the world that we are doing it against the will of God. Monogamy was for Adam, and we shall go for it only when we get back to Eden. Or oh, monogamy was for Eden, you know, the Garden of Eden. <laughs> and we should only get back to monogamy when we get to Eden. So what this person is saying is that when we are still on earth, we can do other things. But when you get back to Eden, we cannot go back to the monogamy way. Pastor, what do you think about that? Actually, well, can I think I said something very right. Monogamy in, this, in, in the universe, it only happened in Eden. After that, life became polygamous immediately after Eden. And God never complained. After Eden, God is a, is a friend of the polygamous people. And the polygamous are the great ones in the Bible. So, if, 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 if somebody wants to, to take us back to Eden, well, that, that, that is their own idea. But in the life we are in, 
Please, and God is not complaining. God never complained about Abraham becoming polygamous. God never complained about Moses. God never complained about Jacob. And we are, and in, in heaven it's about the 12 tribes of the polygamous man, Jacob. Abraham is our father of faith. Now, surely, we cannot have a God who is talking different things. Okay. So, for after, after Eden, mm -hmm. please, light became polygamous. And right. God never complained. <laughs> Simple. God never complained. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Pasi, you just said that God is a friend of the polygamous, which I also saw another comment again. I'm still on Facebook and someone was asking, so Pastor, are you justifying polygamy right now? I'm not justifying it. I'm only saying it, it is the way. Stating the fact. I'm just <laughs> stating the fact. Okay. Because it is not devil who has interfered with God's creation mm -hmm. to create more women for wife than the available men for husband. It is God who has done it. So I'm just <laughs> stating the fact. I'm correcting the wrong. Whoever says polygamy is wrong is, the, is, is, is wrong is one on the wrong. Okay. I'm the one who I'm correcting that wrong. D. Okay. <laughs> okay, one boy, I want you to, co to continue this interview because it's really interesting. But before that, just allow me to read one more tweet. We'll embark more on the tweets later on if you get time. But there's this one from Bruce at Bruce saying that most men are not ready for the empowered millennial women. Society has empowered women, but left most men stuck with expectations of finding the early 20th century type of woman to a wife. So he's saying that the problem is our society. So when you talk about divorce rates, it is us. So this uh, Bruce is saying that when you talk about divorce rates or high divorce rates, the problem, it is us, the society. Why? Because we have empowered women, and especially the millennial women, and we've forgotten about the men. All right. Is that the case? No. Actually, I am writing a book on uh, women empowerment, the best idea wrongly implemented. Mm -hmm. Are you getting the point? The best idea, the best idea wrongly, Im wrongly implemented. Mm -hmm. Women empowerment is very important. They are the workers, they are many, they are, they, they are the, and they are able to do things. But we have empowered them to, uh, uh, to, uh, to, uh, so that they are, they are able to stay without marriage. That is, the, that is where the empowerment has, uh, has led women. You are empowered. You ca you don't need to be under a husband because you are empowered. All right. You don't. You can be on your own. You can manage things on your own. That is the empowering. Now we are empowering women against marriage. I wish the empowerment was to make them appreci appreciate marriage, to make them understand marriage, to make them stay in marriage. But now, and that is where the, my, my problem with education. Mm -hmm. It is concentrating on empowering women to be free from husband. That's, that's the real reality. Mm -hmm. It is empowering women to be free from husband. You can do better without him. You can work without him. You have money. You have a car. You can buy. Your, yes. But then, what about the morals? What will our children be? If all the women today run to be single and empowered, and you give, you give birth to a son. What is the use of a son if there is be no marriage? All right. Now, still on that particular breath, yes. I would like for you to respond to this. Um, there's this research, uh, research that I came across that was <coughs> done by the University of Nairobi mm -hmm. that um, involved some 90 women who are in uh, high-status jobs. Yes. Um, more, all of them were married. Yes. But um, according to uh, their responses, there were two groups in this particular research. One group saying the fact that they are doing very well in their careers has brought problems in their relationships because their husbands feel inferior because they are earning more. And the other group is saying that, you know, they feel their husbands are holding them back mm -hmm. and they are a liability. Mm -hmm. What would be your word of advice to these particular groups and their schools of thoughts? Because in both uh, the constant in both figures is that women are in high ranking um, jobs and statuses in society. Now, again, we, uh, we come to the, what is the, the theory of marriage we have, mm -hmm. the marriage ideology we have. we have. The church has created this scenario that women actually are, okay, well, uh, okay, as a pastor said it in a wedding, he, told, uh, the, he was talking, that, okay, well, the, 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 the bride is working as a graduate, she's working a good job, and, and the pastor say, told the, the, the young man, um, that the money for women is not counted on. They don't work. They, it is like they work for, for, for their own selves. Yeah? It is like it is the man supposed to do everything in the house. So even if your wife is working, <coughs> you are not supposed to count on her money. Then now that now comes, she, okay, then now the, the, the woman is working. 
if she earns more and the, the theology the ideology in the mind is that the man should be having more the, 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 the already the man feels uh, intimidated mm -hmm. because the wife is earning more yes all right because of the the the, 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 the theory in the in the mind but i'm saying in the bible we are the prominent women married to very insignificant men and the one then there's no no complaint we have the shunamite woman she is prominent and known everywhere even in the even by the king and everybody mm -hmm. and the husband is quite miscellaneous but she knows she has a husband and she respects the husband and carries him along so if we had a, the the correct view because it is very important i've said women empowerment is very important women need to be earning women need to do, they, they 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 are able to do well in careers they are able to earn money but then how will ma, ma, how will they manage marriage when they have money and that this is why i'm saying we need to get away this theory that the man must be the super provider mm -hmm. because making wealth is a gift you can be gifted more than me in yeah. making money it's a gift so if you are gifted in making money let us rejoice but let you respect your husband and know that he is there all right so the way is for another purpose not for yeah. money the husband is for another purpose not for money and he will do his purpose so the other thing the constraining bit again uh -huh. there's a lady i don't know whether it was uh in, uh, <coughs> uh, in stereo where I, I'm, 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 I'm a muslim lady said okay she's very busy and said please my husband you have to get another woman because i am very busy the muslim have no problem with that the problem is the Christian. Now, why should you uh, why should you feel being constrained by your husband? Because you have a lot of uh, that, that's why I, I, I say it. Some women surely are very well endowed with so much to do mm -hmm. that consent, uh, that having a, a, a man pulling you down every day for his own other things, my friend, it can be also it, it, it can be it can be also uh, constraining. So I am saying, in a way. Polygamy is actually very good for the hard working women, for the career women, because you are you are free to concentrate on your things. You know your husband is in family in in family C and you have no problem. You will call him when he, when he, please, my dear, I'm missing you. I have not seen you for a long time. I am available. Can we meet? Now if you don't have to worry about him every day. And okay. you have children which are good. That, that is why polygamy will sort out so many things. In this particular conversation, you can see the relationship between polygamy, divorce, bringing the divorce rates down, yes. and finances also, and career growth all intertwined in one. Yes. Actually, all it's, it, is, it, it is a systemic error. We are having a systemic error. We <laughs> have a systemic error in With the area polygamy of being at the center of it. Polygamy is being at the center of it. Women empowerment has come, has come in, mm -hmm. right? Because, because uh, the women have been empowered to be able to do without a husband. All right. So now, given polygamy is still at the center of this whole conversation, yeah. therein comes another aspect that is domestic violence that is also leading to so many um, divorces in this day and time. Yes. How can we help deal with issues to do with domestic violence, targeting the husband and the wife, yeah. because they are the two who are involved in that particular situation, so that we stop having marriages ending because of violence. And this can be physical, emotional, yeah, emotional psychological, yeah. different ways it presents itself. That is quite true. It's quite unfortunate that actually violence, okay, violence happens in marriage. But still, why does it happen? What are the underlying factors? What causes the violence? Why did they become violent? How do, you will see to them and you, and, and you, and, 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 and you will hear the, 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 these two things. The wife is saying, she's not respecting me, mm -hmm. right? She's not respecting me. She's talking me down. When a man is talked down, you really, pull, uh, you, are, you, are, you are pinning his ego. Now that comes to equality. He talks, you talk, you talk. If the husband talks, the wife talks, he talks, you talk, a slap will, will, will happen by the end of it. <laughs> so so I'm, I'm saying, okay, if each one kept to their position, right, um, uh, we will not have, um, um, uh, we will reduce the marital violence. But the violence at night, by the way, only starts in a certain corner. If you hear violence in night, it is started in a certain corner. Somebody not want to do something that they were supposed to do and they could be tired. Mm -hmm. If this man had another place to do, to, to do his thing, he will, the, the, the violence will be reduced. So we have a problem. 
But and when is, is the wife to blame for cases where domestic violence is always happening? You see, now, now, the, now, now, we are especially in Central, we have a big problem because men are now the ones being being, being battered. Yeah. Because he came drunk, right? He did not have, he did not look for money. The wife has looked for money, and uh, she has looked for food. And the man has come here. He doesn't have money, and she she feels so much mad about him. Now, it is not the first time in life for men to be irresponsible. Mm. I'm, very, I'm very sorry. Not all men were responsible in life. Mm. I mean, among our fathers, there were irresponsible men. Yeah. Men who could who still go and go and drink, and still come home drunk, and they have done nothing. And the wife feared that man, because she respected him is the father of my children. Now that's why I'm still saying, there are some good things we need to look at from, uh, from how life has been. The man was respected, and the wife knew how not to touch the, uh, the, the, my husband. She knew how to tell the children, don't abuse your father. Okay. He is drunk, yes, but to respect him, he is your father. But now equality and, um, and, and, and so much fantastic ideas of marriage, as it, me as, uh, it means that if a man is not providing, he is not worth a wife which is not real in life. I, you know, people want to say, the young men of this time are not responsible. I say, no, please, even in the age of my fathers, they were irresponsible men. All right. I Let used to see them drunk and, and falling in the street and doing nothing. And the family was brought up by the wife. All right, let's have yes. a look at what is, uh, people are saying in social media in regards to this particular issue. D. Yeah, I want to run them very, very quickly due to the interest of time. And again, just on Twitter, Amos is saying that not every man is meant to marry as, is, as it is with every, every woman. Uh, so just saying that it's not every man who's meant to marry and also is not the same woman who's meant to marry. And also there's another one asking, is Reverend Mula Polygamous since looks like he's advocating for that. There's another tweet from Dawn saying that I think people emphasize on the wedding and not the marriage. Also a lot of questions in regards to or the wedding and not really uh, the marriage getting ma marriage counselors and all another one from uh, coaches saying folks don't really know what they want the problem of high rate of divorce cases is because people are just delusional and confused that is why we're having high rates of divorce cases and let me just get the last one from Nikita saying that I have heard and seen that social media is becoming the you know the major reason for the high rates of divorce cases especially as of now attributing all of these divorce cases to social media and putting your business out there all right, Reverend. Yes. First one, um, marriage is not meant for everyone. Ah, good. That's a good question. Very briefly, we're almost very out of briefly. time, so just respond. Marriage to not very meant quickly. for every yes. Okay, I talk from a religious man. Mm -hmm. All right. If then we, uh, because religion is uh, is about having morals. If mar if you are not meant for marriage, then be sure you are free of needing sex. Mm -hmm. Period. Sour. All right. That's, uh, that, 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 that is sure. You have, you have no other, and you don't need children and you don't need sex. You are free from marriage. Full stop. All right. Number one. The second tweet was in regards to you advocating for polygamy. Yes. With our viewer asking, are you polygamous? <laughs> well, yeah, I'm polygamous. I have, I have no problem about it. All I'm right. open about it. I'm a polygamous preacher. All right. Who preaches it the Bible way. The next tweet was in regards to people focusing on the wedding as opposed to the marriage. Yes, in fact, that is where now, now the, 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 these are the errors. Because we are focused so much on a big wedding. By the way, mm -hmm. a wedding, a church wedding is not, is not biblical. Mm -hmm. It's not Bible based. There is nowhere you read for me a wedding that happened in the temple. In the Bible wedding, the customary marriage is the Bible, is the biblical marriage. It ends at the customary level. Mm -hmm. The one of the church is again only meant to ensure that you pin down the, the uh, okay, well, okay, the, 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 the wrong that our, that our, our, our wedding does yes. is to pin down the man that you will never look at another woman. But the problem is this other woman is already available <laughs> and she's not be seen, right? All right. And then you, you, you lie that you will never look. Tomorrow, after the, after the honeymoon, and we are coming from the honeymoon. The other guy, the other girl is still calling. How are you, sweet? And right. they were friends. So the, the wedding is actually meant to 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 enforce monogamy. Mm -hmm. That is the, the whole idea of a, it, it is Western. It's not Bible based. 
it is Western. A dissolvement to enforce monogamy. And the monogamy is the era of marriage. All right. Now, the other tweet was in regards to social media bringing about so much confusions and building illusions that don't exist. Yeah. Thus, the higher rates of divorce. And I know we talked about the fantasy that is being built into marriage. Mm -hmm. The over expectation. My the husband should be this. The wife should be this. And you create a fallacy and uh, an idea in the, in the air. All right, and you are expecting that to, it will not happen in real life. Yes. Let's come back to, 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 to reality. Let's face life. Marriage, I've said, is not fun. It is a responsibility and hard work. All right. Now, uh, before we get to have another quick look at social media, what then would you say are the fundamentals for any marriage to last so that we don't have cases of divorce? Well, one, people, people need to know why you are getting married mm -hmm. and what is it into that you are getting married, you are, you are getting into. It is a responsibility. It's a God created, it's a God, marriage is a God given responsibility. Mm -hmm. It has to happen if life is to be decent and it has to be maintained. You have to, you go there ready to work it out. All right, so number one, woman, marriage is a responsibility. Yes. All right. You need to go there ready to work it. But then you need to have the right theology, the right ideology about it. Mm -hmm. That I'm getting married, we are not going to be equal with my husband. If we are equal, then I'm telling you that divorce will happen because a family is an institution. Where there are two or three, there need to be a leader. Okay. And sometimes the leader must lead and say the way forward and the others must fear him and respect. Right. So somebody must know. Okay, so I'm saying, so, sorry, just, 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 just a yes, second. Yes, I'm, yes. I'm saying, if, they, if husband and wife are equal, it is like having a CEO in a company who is as equal authority with his peer. The peer and the CEO have equal authority. That company will collapse. All right. That's why marriage is collapsing, Dari, because of equality. One more look at social media. Facebook, new to, new to says that Nico tuned in Kutoka Mombasa, loving the show. Also, Wangui say, preach to men self-control not polygamy <laughs> that's a fruit of the holy spirit <laughs> that is one is saying that it's really more about self-control and not just the idea of getting more than one wife still oh and actually she's written a long long text but that's the whole idea there but a lot of feedback from facebook people just loving the show loving what they see loving the conversation there i'll get one uh, uh, tweet here this is tyler saying that high divorce rates do not result from lack of compatibility divorce results from our lack of commitment it starts with a little thing so attributing it to just commitment and not really compatibility it looks like there's so different reasons as to why there's high divorce rate cases your quick response to those uh, two uh, messages before teach we get self to close it. teach men self-control and not polygamy please the, that one me the the, the 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 background of that thinking is a very is a very bad uh, um, uh, thinking mm -hmm. because it treats women as sex objects mm -hmm. it makes men they, they, they are just looking for sex looking for sex and the women are just available sex objects please polygamy is not about a man wanting sex mm -hmm. it's about there being many women each needing a husband and each needing a decent life Okay. So right. So anybody think it, if you talk of let men train men self, it's not about that. All right. Please, the men who can manage five women should be allowed to manage the five women because they are available. All right. I think at that we want to put a cap on this particular conversation, but we'll definitely pick it up because there's so much more that needs to be uh, we need to talk about when yes. it comes to why divorce is on a high rise. Yes. But for now, that is the t all the time we had for today's discussion. Thank you so much for being part of this conversation. We have been speaking with Reverend Vincent Molua. He is a pastor and also a teacher at the Christ Pilgrims Restoration Center. Thank you so much. Yes. We look forward to having you again to continue with this discussion. Thank you very much. Uh, when you invite me, I'll gladly come yes. and tell the world the truth yes. and don't tell the church please <laughs> and let the word here the church <laughs> is responsible for the high divorce rate pastors preachers here please rethink your theology of marriage school all those who think about education rethink marriage all let's right. put it in the right perspective all the right. church and the school are killing marriage we have if to we end there first if you don't <laughs> change those two we'll go the worst way all I'm right sorry. that is that for now but we're going to continue with this particular conversation but for now thank you so much be sure to join us again tomorrow morning right here on kbc for another edition of good morning kenya my name is jen Wamboy. have a lovely day god bless see you tomorrow